<clears throat> oh, hello there. <clears throat> Pardon me, I was uh, just practicing my roar. It gets a little rusty these days. There's just not much to roar about. By the way, let me introduce myself. I'm the Cowardly Lion of Oz. At least I used to be cowardly, but then the Wizard of Oz gave me a big helping of double barrel steel plated rip snorting courage. Of course, you can't see my courage because, as the wizard says, courage is on the inside. That's why I have to practice roaring now and then. With all that courage bottled up inside, I just have to let off steam. Now, I suppose you're all wondering what's happened to me since the great adventure I had with Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. Well, Dorothy got back safely to our home in Kansas, and the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and I all have our palaces that Ozma gave us, and that's where we live. And confidentially, it's a lovely, lovely life. And I wouldn't change it for all the emeralds in the Emerald City. As the former cowardly lion, the timid king of beasts, I'm a ruler in my palace that's for real. They say I'm quite important in a local sort of way. I'm pretty large potatoes. Anyhow, that's how I feel. Each morning I arise at ten, I breakfast royally, and then I go right back to bed again. I'm living a lovely life. My income taxes I inspect, I'm worried that they're not correct, cause I don't pay them, I collect. I'm living a lovely life. <laughs> If I want a short vacation at a spot beside the sea, I don't travel there by boat or plane, they bring it here to me. I've got my palace, it's so grand, a coach that's made of platinum, and a lifetime pass to Disneyland, I'm living a lovely life. <laughs> No, you have no idea. <laughs> if I want a short vacation at a spot beside the sea, I don't travel there by boat or plane. They bring it right here to me. I've got my palace. It's so grand. A coach that's made of platinum and a lifetime pass to Disneyland. I'm living a lovely life. Hey, yoddy dee dum dee dum Oh, it's such a marvelous life. You really wouldn't believe it. Well, that's how it is. Everything going along just fine. But it isn't always so peaceful and quiet. No siree. In fact, I'm going to tell you the story of an adventure that was really scary. <laughs> if it wasn't for all that courage the wizard gave me, I don't know what I would have done. Yes, I do too. I would have run like a coward. It all began one day when I was sitting in my palace and the Oz alarm went off. Now the Oz alarm is a loud siren and a flashing red light. And it's turned on by Glinda the Good from her palace when there's an emergency. And the moment I saw that flashing red light and heard the siren, I knew one thing for sure. There's trouble in Oz, such trouble in Oz. Oz is not the happy Oz it used to was. I don't know the how or the why or the when or the where or the just because, but there's T-R-O-U-B-L-E in Oz. Things usually are quiet in the land of Oz, but now and then they sound the Oz alarm. Then the leaders of Oz, the tried and true, know right away what we've got to do. We answer the call, we all come through, keep it safe from trouble and harm when they're sounding the Oz alarm. There's trouble in Oz, such trouble in Oz. Oz is not the happy Oz it used to was. I don't know what's wrong, but I gotta get there and start helping them out because there is trouble, double trouble. Things are starting to boil and bubble. There's trouble, double trouble, a bubble in Oz. <laughs> How or the why or the when or the where or the just because But this T-R-O-U-B-L-E in Oz Oz is not the happy Oz it used to was 
I don't know what's wrong, but I gotta get there and start helping them out because there is trouble, double trouble. Things are starting to boil and bubble. There's trouble, double trouble, a bubble in Oz. Yes, there is. Now, Glenda the Good lives in the Quadling country, and I hurried there to her castle just as fast as I could. <laughs> Why, Lion, dear, you are out of breath. You must have run all the way. Oh, I did, Glenda the Good. When the Oz alarm went off, I knew something must be wrong. And you had a task for me and the other leaders. I have a task, Lion, but just for you, alone. Alone? But what about the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman? The Scarecrow has gone to the popcorn fields to scare crows, so that the popcorn people's popcorn can grow. And the Tin Woodman has gone out of town to attend to the Tin Woodchopper's Ball. Very well, I'll do it alone. Just me and my courage. Now, what's the task? Sit down, Lion, and I'll explain. Did you know that King Mador, the ruler of the prattling country, is visiting Oz? I did hear about that. I believe he came to pay a state visit to Ozma in celebration of a hundred years of peace between prattling and Oz. That is true. But I'm afraid there won't be another hundred days of peace between Oz and Prattling unless we hurry and straighten out this terrible thing that has happened. But I heard the celebration was such a success. Fireworks, dancing in the streets. True, until an awful thing happened. Prince Paul, King Mador's son, has been kidnapped. How terrible. Who could have done such an awful deed? I know exactly who did it. I saw the whole thing on my magic TV set that records everything that happens in the world. Then tell me, Glenda the Good, and I'll track him down and get that boy back. It is Smarmy, Lion. Smarmy the Witch. You, you mean Smarmy? The wickedest witch of all? She has Prince Paul. Oh, dear. If I'm going to go after her, I'm glad my courage is double-barrel, steel-plated, and rip-snorting. But why would Smarmy the Witch want to kidnap Prince Paul? Just for meanness? No, although that would be enough reason for Smarmy. But she is in league with Archduke Grimble of Prattling, a truly evil man who is determined to get King Mador's throne. But how will Smarmy's taking the prince help accomplish this? This is their plan. If Prince Paul is not returned immediately, Archduke Grimble will declare war on Oz. This will make King Mador, who is a reasonable man, seem like a weakling for not declaring war himself. Yes. And what happens next? Then. Which smarmy will turn Prince Paul over to Archduke Grimble, and he will pretend to have rescued the prince, which will make him a national hero and able to depose King Mador and take over his throne. Oh, dear, oh, dear, what a mess. What a terrible mess. What a messy mess. I just wish the Scarecrow and Tin Woodman were there to help out. But I told Glenda the Good that, of course, I would do my best and ask her if she had any idea where smarmy the witch had taken Prince Paul. Glenda replied that Smarmy had turned the boy into a puppet and turned him over to Glarm, an evil puppeteer, who had brought his puppet show to the celebration and was now traveling around Oz giving shows. Now, Lion, I want you to... Lion, are you ill? Is that a thermometer in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Lion, I can't understand you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There. Excuse me, Glenda. I wasn't taking my temperature. This is a courage meter and I was checking my courage. Uh, let's see, 102, above normal. Very good. I can undertake the most dangerous task without fear. Good. Now I want you to travel through Oz till you find Glarm's puppet show and then rescue Prince Paul. Immediately. Uh, uh, what's in that package? Oh yes. In this package are certain objects that may help you in what lies ahead. Take it, and bless you, Lion, and good luck. Thank you, Glenda the Good, and do not worry. I will have Prince Paul back with his father, King Mador, before you can say supercalifragilistic expialidocious, uh, supercalifragilistic, supercalifragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> Sooner, I hope. Goodbye, Lion. And so, armed with Glenda the Good's package, I set forth on my task. I made my way through the land of Oz looking for some sign of glarm, and... One day, walking through the forest, I came upon a little girl. She was sitting under a satiola tree reading a big book, and she looked very puzzled. T stands for scarecrow. T stands for woodman. What a strange alphabet. Uh, pardon me, little girl. Oh, uh, Mr. Lion, I didn't hear you come up. Well, that is because I came up 
stealthily. The lion did not become the king of beasts by blundering about like a, <clears throat> forgive me, bull in a china shop. Now, what's your problem? It's this book. It appears to be an alphabet book, 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 but it's all confused. Look here. It says H stands for scarecrow and T stands for woodman. It doesn't make much sense. Well, let me see it, please. Thank you. Oh, I see why you're confused. This is not a book of the alphabet, but a book of the Ozphabet. Ozphabet? Would you explain that? Gladly. <laughs> H stands for Scarecrow, H because he's hay-filled, these are simple alphabetic laws. H stands for Scarecrow, cause everybody knows, the alphabet's the alphabet in Oz. Now T stands for Woodman, cause he's Tim the Woodman, T's for Tim the truth it ever was. T stands for Woodman, cause everybody knows, the alphabet's the alphabet in Oz. A for apple, B for best, C conventional goodness, yes, A, B, C's are useful in their way. But Oz is another cup of tea. A G's for tea, it's green, you see. The alphabet is there, not here to stay. C stands for lion, C because he's cowardly. C because I'm cute as Santa Claus. <laughs> H for Scarecrow, T for Woodman, G for G, C for Lion. That's the how and the why and the just because. The alphabet's the alphabet. You think you're getting the hang of it? The alphabet's the alphabet in us. There you are. I hope that makes everything clear. Thank you, Lion. I think I understand. Good. Now, you know my name, but I don't know yours. I don't either. You don't know your own name? I, I've forgotten it. I forget everything. Oh, very odd. Hmm. What's this embroidered on your dress? Uh, it says, forget me not. Oh, yes. I forgot it was there. Oh, that's my name, forget me not. What an odd name for a little girl who forgets everything. Uh, say, that's a pretty doll you have. Thank you. Her name is... Oh, sorry, I've forgotten. Never mind. Here's a tag fastened to her. Japan. Her name's Japan. Of course, now I remember. Uh, this is quite a coincidence. I have a fountain pen named Japan. I wonder if they're related. <clears throat> well, pleasant as it was talking to this absent-minded little creature, I still had to find Glarm, the evil puppeteer to whom Smarmy the witch had given Prince Paul after changing him into a puppet. I asked Forget-Me-Not if she had happened to see a puppet show recently, but of course she couldn't remember. So I did something so smart that it would have done credit to the scarecrow's brains. I took Forget-Me-Not's doll and tied strings to its hands and feet. Then, holding the strings in my hands, I jiggled the doll up and down and made it dance like a puppet. This jiggled Forget-Me-Not's memory, and she remembered that she had indeed seen a puppet show in a village not too far away. Now, wasn't that smart? At any rate, we started off down the path through the forest toward the village. We'd gone perhaps a mile or two, when suddenly... Oh, Lion! Lion! What's that? Oh! I looked up the path and saw a sight so fearful that it taxed every bit of my courage. The ugliest old woman I had ever seen was standing across the path several yards ahead of us. She wore a long, shabby black dress and a tall, pointed black hat. <laughs> so you're the cowardly lion. No, I'm not the cowardly lion anymore. I'm the brave lion now. You mean because of that little smidgen of courage the wizard gave you? <laughs> oh, no, lion. What's a coward? Always a coward. <laughs> Did you hear that, forget-me-not? Stand aside. I'll show her who's a coward. I rushed down the path, determined to put this nasty old woman in her place. I would have, too. But all of a sudden... Help! Help! Lion! Lion, where are you? He's down there, at the bottom of my lion trap. 
he fell in, just as I knew he would. <laughs> she was right. I was at the bottom of a deep pit the old woman had dug in a path and then covered over with branches and leaves. Hey, you! Old woman up there! Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Here. Here's my business card. I'll throw it down to you. Let's see. Smarmy. Smarmy! The wickedest witch of them all at your service. Houses haunted and potions prepared. I don't care about that. You get me out of here. Don't interrupt, Buster. I want you to realize whom you are dealing with. If there's someone you would wish turned into a frog or fish, go no further. That's my dish. Just call small. To frighten tots, make them scream in wholesale lots, or break out in purple spots. Just call Smarmy. As a girl in school, I got an A in witchcraft. Soon became a member of the witch's lodge. And witchcraft has turned out to be a rich craft. I've always got two brand new brooms in my garage. <laughs> if you want to buy a curse, an evil spell, or something worse, I deliver in my curse. And just call Smarmy. you wicked old witch. I'm listening. Good. There is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> Goodbye, lion. <laughs> well, it looked as though Smarmy was right. For I was at the bottom of the pit she dug with no way to get out. I'll tell you, it takes more than courage. Even double barrel, steel plated, rip snorting courage like mine to get out of a lion trap. And with Glinda and Ozma of Oz depending on me to thwart the plans of Slarmy and Archduke Grumble and get Prince Paul back to his father, King Mador. At this point, I was so discouraged that I almost wished I could be like Forget Me Not and just forget the whole thing. forget about the whole thing. Not with Glenda the Good depending on me to straighten matters out for her. I had to find the evil puppeteer Glarm. But first, I had to get out of Smarmy's lion trap, the deep pit I had fallen into. The sides were straight and high, with no place to get a hand or a foothold. 
but the beginnings of an idea were stirring in my brain. I called out, Oh, forget me not! Forget me not! Yes, Lion. What is it? Forget me not! The path where you're standing is bordered on either side by round, flat stones, right? Uh, that's right, Lion. They're all along the path. See if you can lift one and bring it to the edge of this pit. All right. Oh, how I hoped she could. Everything depended on it. Mm. I, I've got one, Lion. <sighs> they're, ra they're rather heavy, but I can manage. Good girl. Now, drop it down into the pit. Splendid! These stones are nice and flat. Now, forget me not, I want you to get more stones, one at a time, and drop them into the pit. I have a plan to get out of this dreadful trap. Very well, Lion. I'll help all I can. Well, it was a hard job and hot work for her, but forget me not was a good, strong little girl and kept dropping the flat stones down to me. As she did so, I piled them up against the side of the pit, standing on the pile as it grew higher. <sighs> Finally, the pile grew high enough so that I was able to get my front paws over the edge of the pit and pull myself out. <sighs> oh, Lion, we did it, we did it, you're free. You did it, my dear. But you must be exhausted lugging all those stones. Oh, I was, but I forgot about it. You know how easily I forget things. Nevertheless, I made forget me not rest a bit and then we started out again, down the path through the forest that would lead us into the village where Forget-Me-Not had seen Glarm's puppet show. Night had fallen when we arrived on the outskirts of the village. While I scouted around to see what I could see, I asked Forget-Me-Not to hide the package Glinda the Good had given us so that we wouldn't be burdened down in case we had to make a quick getaway. Then we made our way to the village square where the puppet show was even then in progress. Several delightful puppets were on stage as we edged closer through the crowds, and they were singing and dancing merrily. One funny little clown puppet took the lead while the others acted as a chorus. The Viennese, they much admire the one. Wunderbar! The Irish, like a fine old Irish jig. <laughs> The Spanish love to tango, the French prefer a cash. In Mexico, the cha-cha's very big. But to a little puppet who's dancing on a string, a certain melody is very dear. Very dear. Yes, every little puppet will dance like anything. The moment this happy tune they hear. Master was an evil man. Obviously, there was nothing Forget Me Not and I could do right then about locating Prince Paul. So as unobtrusively as possible, we left the square and went back to the forest on the outskirts of the village. There we waited until the puppet show was over, the crowd had gone home, the last light in the village had been turned off, and everyone was asleep for the night. All right, Forget Me Not. I think it's safe for us to get started. First, get the package Glenda gave us that I told you to hide. All right. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I forgot where I hid the package. Oh, my goodness. How stupid I am. I should have known better. The scarecrow or the ten woodman would never have done a dumb thing like giving you Glenda's package to hide. Oh, Lion, Lion, don't berate yourself. It's all right. All right. 
But you just said you'd forgotten where you hid the package. And we certainly will need the things it contains for the job that lies ahead. But you see, I knew I'd forget where I hid the package. So when I buried it among the leaves at the bottom of a tree, I hung my doll on the tree to mark the spot. Oh, what a smart little girl you are, for one so forgetful. Come along, let's find your doll. Well, it didn't take us but a few moments to locate Forget-Me-Not's doll hanging on a tree. And we quickly pushed aside the leaves and recovered Glenda the Good's package. Leaving the doll there until we should return, we made our way stealthily into the village to where Glam was encamped at the edge of the square. There were two wagons there, silent and dark. One was the wagon in which Glam had his living quarters. The other was the puppet wagon. Glam had apparently gone to bed for the night, so very cautiously, I started to open the door of the puppet wagon. Oh, my goodness. Uh, who is there? It's Glam. Stay back in the shadows. <sighs> Just the night wind. Is it all right now? Yes, but don't try to open the door any wider. We must sneak through it. We did so and found ourselves inside the puppet wagon. Fortunately, the moonlight streaming in through a tiny high window up in one wall enabled us to see. The puppets were all hanging in a row, suspended on hooks from a beam that ran the length of the wagon. Now our problem was how to tell which one of the puppets was really Prince Paul. There were all kinds of puppets hanging on the beam. The cloud who had led the singing, a milkmaid, a policeman, puppet, and many others, any one of which could have been the young prince. It was a real puzzler. Even the scarecrow, with all his fine brains, would have been stumped. Then I remembered the package Glenda the Good had given me. She said it contained some objects which might be useful. I decided this was the time to open the package. I did so, and among the items in Glenda's package was a familiar-looking object, which at first appeared to be a telescope. Hmm. This, forget me not, appears to be a telescope. So it does. But there's some printing on the side. It says... Puppet scope. By George. Puppet scope, huh? Forget me not. I believe Glenda the Good meant for me to look through this uh, puppet scope at the puppets. She must have. Right. I'll start here at this end and work my way down the line. Hmm. This first one is just what he appears to be, a clown. Number two appears to be, and is, a bandmaster. Number three appears to be a circus acrobat. But wait, forget me not. We found him. We found Prince Paul. Oh, Lion, how do you know? Look at him through the puppet scope. That puppet is no acrobat, but a prince in royal robes. Oh, he is, he is. Oh, Lion, what shall we do? We must take him with us. Now, put the puppet scope back in the package. You carry it and I'll take the prince. Pardon me, your highness. Er, your princeness, uh, er, er, let me just get you down from this hook and we'll be on our way. Come along, forget me not. We sneaked quietly out of the puppet wagon, being very careful not to move the door and started squeaking again. Outside, the moon had gone down and the stars were beginning to pale. I knew it would soon start to get light, so we hurried out of the village to the shelter of the forest. By the time we got back to the tree in the forest where we had left forget me not's doll, it was daylight. She took the doll down from the tree and then... Oh, bother. Lion, just look at this. What seems to be the trouble? Just look. Some of the sap from that tree has run down and gotten all over my doll's face. What a mess. It certainly is. Wipe my face, forget-me-not. Whatever happened to your voice, forget-me-not? You must have caught a cold running around in this damp forest. My voice? I thought you said that. Of course I didn't say it. Now, why would I say that the sap had run down? Will you two stop arguing and wipe this sap out of my eyes? Why, why, it's your doll. She's talking. I'm not a doll. I'm Princess Flora of Prattling. A princess? Good heavens, your princessness. Let me wipe the sap from your eyes. There. Thank you. Perhaps I'd better explain. You see, I really am Princess Flora. And Smarney the witch turned me into a doll because I knew all about the plot to kidnap Prince Paul. He and I are engaged to be married. Gracious! But how did you get here? Simple. Forget-me-not is the daughter of one of the courtiers at King Mador's court. She saw me, thought I was a doll she had forgotten about, 
and brought me to Oz when she came with her father for the celebration. I don't remember any of that, but Princess Flora, how is it you can talk now? That tree you hung me on was a sadiola tree, and there is a chemical in the sap which restored my voice. Now, if we can only restore the rest of you. There's just one way to do that. Which Smarney must have the antidote that will do the trick? Well, this sounded logical to me. So we hit on a plan. Glarm, the evil puppeteer, did not know either forget me not or me by sight. So we decided to go into the village and ask him if he knew where we could locate Smarmy. Forget me not carried the package Glinda had given me, and I concealed the doll, Flora, and the puppet, Prince Paul, under my coat. And we marched into the village and went directly to Glarm's wagon. Smarmy, eh? And what might you be wanting with the old witch? Well, I... It's about, um... It's about hiring her to, uh... Yeah, to haunt a house. Yes, that's it. <laughs> to haunt a house. Um, it, it's quite a large house. I pay well for the job. Hmm. Well, now you are in luck. Old Smarmy just happens to be here now. Right over there in my puppet wagon. Go on in. Do not bother to knock. Obviously, I had taken the man in completely with my smooth talk. <laughs> we hastened to the puppet wagon, opened the door, and stepped inside. It was quite dark inside the wagon, and I was just looking about for Smarmy when... What? What? What's going on here? <laughs> you're locked in. That's what's going on. And you're my prisoners, all of you. Smarmy! Smarmy. That's right. <laughs> the alarm had tricked us. Smarmy's voice was coming through the tiny window, set high on the wall of the puppet wagon. She must have been sitting on the roof. was desperate. Courage, brains. I needed more than these. I needed help. Glancing hastily around, my eyes fell on the package Glenda the Good had given me. I quickly opened it and began pulling out the objects inside, hoping that something would turn up which would help us out of this terrible mess. One of the things I pulled out looked like an ordinary flashlight, but then I saw that it was labeled Osmagnetron, and there were instructions printed on it that said point and press button. I didn't have to be told twice. I quickly pointed the Osmagnetron directly at the tiny window through which Smarmy's voice was coming. I pressed the button... <laughs> the Osmagnetron had worked! My scientifically trained mind instantly grasped what had happened. The crenellator had reversed the magnetic field, which instantly acted on the body like a phrenostat, shrinking Smarmy so she could be drawn through the tiny window. The manipulation set in, and she was immediately restored to normal size. Brilliant. Shmarmy lay at our feet, knocked out cold. Lion, look. A bottle dropped out of the pocket of Smarmy's gown. Here. Hmm. It says, antidote. Forget me not. This is it. This is what we need to change the puppet and the doll back into Prince Paul and Princess Flora. Hurry, Lion. Pour it over us before Smarmy wakes up. Right. Here we go. There, that should do it. Oh, my goodness. They're changing back into themselves. Oh, Flora. Oh, Paul, Paul. Lion, you have done your country and mine a great service. Your courage shall be rewarded. Oh, thank you, your uh, uh, honor. But we gotta get out of here. First, grab that big ball of cord that Glarm uses for his puppets, and we'll tie Smarmy to this chair while she's still knocked out. Good thinking, Lion. Let's go. We were in the midst of tying up Smarmy when suddenly Glarm's voice came from the tiny window. Hey, what is going on in there? With great presence of mind, Prince Paul grabbed the Osmagnetron, aimed it at the window, <whistles> pressed the button, and... His aim was as accurate as mine. Again, the crenellator reversed the magnetic field, which instantly acted on the body like a phrenostat, shrinking Glarm so he could be drawn through the tiny window. Canipulation set in, and he was immediately restored to normal size and out cold on the floor. 
There was plenty of puppet cord about. So as soon as we had the pair of them trussed up tightly to two chairs, the four of us, Prince Paul, Princess Flora, Forget-Me-Not, and I, hurriedly left the puppet wagon and made our escape into the forest. Well, we soon located the path which led us back to the Quadling country and the palace of Glinda the Good. Fortunately, we got back in time to restore Prince Paul to his father, King Mador, before the evil Archduke Grimble could declare war on Oz and carry out his wicked scheme to do King Mador out of his throne. King Mador was so happy that he set the date there and then for the wedding of Prince Paul and Princess Flora, which made them happy too. Queen Ozma declared the day of our return a national Ozza Day, which is the same as a holiday in the outside world. Forget me not, had never heard of an Ozza Day, so she looked it up in the Ozphabet book. J stands for Ozza Day. J because it's joyous. How very logical. And joyous it was. Everything turned out fine. Couldn't have been better. But while we were watching the celebration, I confided to Glenda the Good that there had been times during this adventure when in spite of my double barrel, steel-plated, rip-snorting courage, I had been pretty doubtful that any of us would ever get back home again with all of our dear friends in Oz. Oh, Lion, I didn't worry about you for a minute. I knew you'd all come through safely. You did? How'd you know that? Because I believed. And that's what you must do in the future.